I was on board the ship um, actually professionally as a, as, a, as a journalist. I was there to report what happened. But um, as with most cases, uh, the Israeli government and the Israeli military does not differentiate between anyone. Um, it lumps anyone who uh, opposes or disagrees with its barbaric methods and policies. None of the people were detained. We were all kidnapped. Detention, uh, there is a legal uh, justification for it. No one was detained, no one was arrested. Every single person was kidnapped, abducted, full stop. There's no, there's no other way to describe this. In the prison, uh, I asked to see a lawyer, I was refused. I asked to see the British consulate, I was refused. I asked to make a phone call, I was refused. There was one of the, the Malaysian uh, activists on the top deck earlier in the day. His hands were tied so tight behind his back, I could see it going all sorts of colors. He requested once, twice, three times, very politely, very soft-spoken, can you please uh, loosen these? The Israeli uh, soldier came up to him after the third time, tightened it even more. Um, the scream that he let out um, from a grown man who, who really, and it's just, uh, um, there was obviously plenty of uh, uh, Quran copies and also the Bible and many other holy books that were present. These were just trashed around. There was no regard for anything sacred whatsoever, um, least of all for human life and dignity. I was only taken off the ship at 7 or 8 a.m. the next day. Throughout this time, uh, I did not eat anything. There was no food. Uh, literally, all that was given to me were three sips of water. People in Gaza do not are not left forsaken just because what we went through ultimately is not, it's not even 48 hours of what tens of thousands of Palestinians have gone through and go through year after year. As daunting as it may have been for me or for anyone else, ultimately there are tens of thousands of other Palestinians who go through this all the time and are unreported and people do not hear about. They do not have the luxury of coming here to speak or know the support that people have. The only thing that will keep them going and the only thing that they can live on is for more of these convoys to go through, for more journalists to go on the board tonight. Though the matter of Palestinian child prisoners has been addressed on several occasions, it continues to be a horrific reality that sees no end in sight. Each year, hundreds of Palestinian children from the occupied Palestinian territories are arrested, interrogated, and imprisoned by the Israeli military authorities. While the international law states that child imprisonment should be used as a measure of lost resort, the Israeli occupation forces view it as a matter of routine, and it's become common news in Palestine. When children are arrested, they are usually taken to adult military detention centers and interrogation centers. Frequently, cases arise where children are forced to sign confessions, and this after being beaten and handcuffed, or subjected to positional abuse. Meanwhile, children being deprived their liberty are often denied access to health care and education, adequate nutrition, hygiene, and recreational time. As for family visits, they are a rare privilege. The distressing outcome we later witness is inevitable. The impact of imprisonment and the horrific experiences suffered by child prisoners results in a negative impact on their future development as individuals. I would just like to refute Israel's suggestion that the deaths on the Marmara and the violence that they treated the passengers to on the Marmara were somehow a result of the reception they received on the Mamara. They treated all of the boats in the flotilla with violence. They did not treat any of us peacefully. And when they say that, that's an absolute lie. I was on a boat of 17 people, seven men, 10 women. The armed massed commandos on the Zodiacs began firing with rubber bullets before they even got onto our boat. The women on our boat stood on the decks, resisted only with their bodies, with no other implement. They were all uh, shot repeatedly at close range, some hit with sound bombs, uh, one seriously injured in, in the face, her, her nose was burnt and, and, and broken, and then everybody was tackled to the floor, put face down in the broken glass which the soldiers had smashed on our, on our boat. Many of the women were clipped behind their backs, which is very dangerous on such a small vessel, uh, and two of the women were hooded Guantanamo style.
according to international law, any human being below the age of 18 is considered to be a child, and Israel does apply that standard to their own Israeli citizens. But uh, as usual, the double standards apply in the case of Palestinian children, and from the age of 12 upwards, uh, a, a Palestinian child can be treated as an adult. They can be arrested and uh, detained. The first problem is these detention centers are often inside Israel as opposed to the occupied Palestinian territory, which is contrary to international law. And um, the second thing is the journey in itself is extremely traumatic. It could take hours while they're cuffed. There's abuse going on. They can be shouted at, swearing at, kicked, hit. There's a lot of uh, allegations of mistreatment going on during the actual transfer period as well. So that's the arrest stage. The second stage is then the actual interrogation. When the children get to the detention center, first of all, they're held with adults, which is, uh, again, breaching international standards of law. Children should be kept in separate facilities from adults, which they're not. The second thing is they're not given access to a lawyer, and um, they are also subjected to torture at this point as well. There's accusations of sleep deprivation, a solitary confinement, beating, swearing, kicking by the Israeli authorities towards these children. And, of course, we know even for a hardened adult criminal, this would be beyond the pale. Oh, absolutely, it's bad enough, and especially if you haven't done anything, you've been dragged away from your family in the middle of the night and you've got no one with you, you're hours away, miles away from your home, and you're already scared enough. Um, but then, uh, having gone through all the sleep deprivation and solitary confinement and all the interrogations, they're often then presented with a piece of paper which they're asked to sign, uh, which is almost always in Hebrew. Now, these are Palestinian children, they don't speak Hebrew, they speak Arabic, but they're told to sign it, and in most cases they do. They don't have a lawyer to recommend that they don't sign it. They don't have a lawyer telling them that they should have it in Arabic first. And the problem is they'll sign it just to end the cycle of abuse that's been happening to them. And, just and I think a lot of us adults would actually do yeah, that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And these are kids, and they just want to go home. A lot of the time, they're deceived by the guards as to what the content is, or, you know, sign it, we'll let you go, and that kind of thing. And um, the problem is often what it is, it's a Hebrew confession, and once they've signed it, that often forms the foundation of their whole prosecution. There are not necessarily witnesses to what they've been alleged to have done, there's no CCTV footage. That one statement they've signed under pressure in Hebrew is going to be the foundation of the prosecution in many, many cases. <laughs>